five, four, three, two, one. Okay, everyone. Um, hopefully, I'm good. All right, all right, <laughs> wonderful. Um, hello, everyone. My name is Osmorn, and today we are going to be playing uh, Super Liminal. All Easter eggs. This is actually a very recent um, making its home over there on the category extensions board that we've also just made recently. Um, and we're happy to have its debut here at uh, Speed Supper Charity 8. Um, it was originally conceptualized by our, a community member, Bagel Cat, um, who was originally supposed to be here for commentary, but unfortunately, due to, uh, due to some conflicts, uh, could not be here today. Um, but we have uh, another person on commentary. Uh, would you care to introduce yourself? Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Archmage. Um, you know, I've been uh, running the game for a while now, various categories. Uh, helped invent some of the strats for this category, which I'm pretty proud of. But yeah, I'm just uh, super excited to be here. Wonderful. And with that, uh, we're going to start the run real quick. Um, the run does not start when we enter this level, but rather it starts when we walk through the first door. And if everything is ready, um, we'll just, uh, well, first off, we got to sign the terms of service for good luck. And then we're just going to go straight into the run. I'm just going to leave it up to my commentator for this first bit because I'm going to go straight into a trick. Um, but if everything's ready, I'll give us a countdown in five, four, three, two, one. Go. All right, so as you'll be seeing here, um, this is a pretty cool game. The main mechanic is that um, basically objects are where they appear to be, and they're the size that they seem to be based on perspective. So we're going to abuse that right here by making this chess piece massive, jumping into it, and uh, going out of bounds, just like that. Yeah. The way that that trick works is that the game um, doesn't want two objects in the same space at the same time. So we make the object so big that there's no space between the object and us, and there's no space between the object and the roof. And so the game sees that there's two objects in the same space, and so it launches us up um, in order to in order to make space for the and for the chess piece. And with that, we get launched out of bounds and have insane velocity. It's not always consistent the velocity that you get from those kinds of launches, but luckily we got our first try there. All right, and then the uh, the rest of this level will mostly be glitchless. Um, this is a good showcase of the the game's main mechanic here, just um, you know, kind of using that to press down buttons or um, get over obstacles, just uh, to progress through the the remainder of this first level. Like this right here, small sign turns to big sign. Beautiful. That's also a good example of how everything just kind of lines up for the runner at certain points in the run. Um, but so far, I feel like we're having a good induction fast cheese and um, we can also use uh, the physics of certain properties to you know just topple stuff down and use other glitches that we're gonna uh, talk about uh, later in the run but with that that is a uh, that's the end of the first level induction yeah I was gonna say, the way that cheese works is basically as long, when you release an object it's uh, physics kind of gets unlocked briefly so you can move it for a little while um, and uh, those walls are supposed to, you're supposed to be able to knock them down with certain objects. So what we do there is just quickly jump into the cheese, and then the cheese knocks down the walls. You want to explain optical here? Yeah, so right here, this will be our first Easter egg. Um, this category is all Easter eggs, so we're trying to find all the eggs in the, ga in the game. And as you saw there briefly, um, they are literal eggs just hidden around in various places. So that first one's fairly easy. This next one is going to be a little harder. Uh, hopefully this launch works. It's a little inconsistent. Nope. Uh, second try here. Ah, oh, no. Nope. Wow. Okay. That's fine. We have a backup. Yep, we'll do a backup. We'll do a different launch, and we're trying to get the egg that's up on the nope. catwalk, up towards the ceiling. Oh, dear. This is very weird. There we go. All right, oh. perfect. Oh, we, all, we didn't get oh, it. Oh, close. Get it. So, yeah, for this category, oh. you have to grab and release the egg for it to count as being collected. So we'll do a different launch here, and that launch is pretty wild. There we we go. call that one a, uh, yeah, that launch is pretty weird. Basically, that one is uh, messing with the game's object placement system. Basically, uh, we make the object really big and rotate it inside the player, and then when you drop it, the game doesn't know where to put it, so it's very briefly placed um, 
the size of the entire level before the game deletes it. Um, but it, it launches you, basically. There yeah. we go. Another launch. And that's I'm another... To... Oh, sorry. Yeah, that's another example of a push launch right there, where we unlock the physics of an object to just launch it straight into the air. Um, that's specifically we like to call can launches, uh, because you do it with a soda can. Um, but it can be a blessing and a curse. Uh, the consistencies of these kinds of launches aren't always, um, aren't always nice. But we seem to be having pretty good luck so far with our launches. Yep. Want to so explain this we'll launch do, right here? Yeah, now we'll do another launch here. Um, this one is fairly inconsistent, but uh, hopefully it'll launch us super high up uh, and allow us to get to the, uh, the end of the level. And the developers, they constructed this level uh, using kind of portals built into the environment. But um, a consequence of that is that the actual level geometry um, is laid out a little weirdly. So the end of the end of the level is actually right next to the beginning. So you can launch directly to it. And as yeah. you can see, this launch is a little bit uh, a little bit finicky sometimes. Um, takes a couple tries to to pull off. Ooh, we almost Ooh, got close. it there. Okay. Tip over, please. Okay. Oh dear, you can the, the the consistency with this uh, launch is very very weird. You either get like first try or it takes forever to do, like it is now. Yeah, these can launches can be a little frustrating uh, for sure. Um, especially this hallway right here seems to have a little bit weird physics properties. Sometimes you hit, you jump and you hit the ceiling. Sometimes it uh it just isn't quite big enough. Oh, that should there be we good. go. That looked good. There we go. And you saw briefly there before it disappeared uh, because of the limited render distance. Um, that's where we're trying to get to. That elevator there. Okay, let's hope that was high enough. I think it was. Oh yeah, that was more than high enough. Thank God. Perfect. Wonderful. And there we go. You hit the uh, the end trigger that's right in the middle of that elevator, and then uh, it's just a countdown to the uh, the level transition. Great. Uh, this next level, Cubism, there's only one uh, Easter egg, and it's at the very beginning. So we're not really making much of a detour. Um, the, the, the category that we base our rules off of is the main, uh, the main category, Warpless, where any glitch is allowed except for a specific one that uh, changes your vertical distance and just warps you to the end of the level, um, or your horizontal distance, rather. But there's our, first, there's our only Easter egg of the, of the run, of the, of the yeah, uh, level, Cubism. sorry of cubism and then we're going to perform another um standard out of bounds launch with this cube it's pretty much like the easiest out of bounds launch in the game uh, at the very least on modern patch yeah in um, the original patch of the game um much much more difficult so they the way they for some reason the uh, physics engine changed a little bit uh, when they patched the game um in uh, i think 2020 i believe so yeah mm -hmm. this launch is much easier now than it used to be yeah and uh, this is another one where it basically takes us right to the end here. Um, we'll have a kind of a scripted teleport after we fall down the hole here. But, um, you know, that's nothing out of the ordinary. And we this will take us, yeah, right to, the, right to the end hallway. The majority of the levels will end like this, you know, with a, with a hallway at the end uh, that has an elevator just bring us straight to the, to the transition. Uh, you want to explain Blackout? Yeah. Blackout is... is um, it's a really neat level casually, especially, because um, it kind of plays with your expectations. Um, you know, like you think it's going to be kind of the, a, a transition to a horror game, but a lot of it is just like kind of shadows placed in ways that make you like kind of think there's something scary when there's actually kind of nothing there. But we're going to try and kind of skip most of it using kind of launches to bounce around the level. This launch is fairly difficult, one of the most difficult in the run. Um, so we'll see if it works. If it doesn't, um, you can always always do the do the level glitchless. Yeah, um, we. Well, let's see if this works. Oh, Oof. oh, that actually hey, might work. Hey, that looked good. That actually might work. Yeah. Okay. I told myself that I didn't get if I didn't get that within the first two tries that I just wouldn't go for it, and just do the level glitchless because otherwise it wouldn't save time. But it seems as though we got it. That that definitely looks promising. Yep. So we've got a. Just a little bit more falling here, um, similar to induction. Oh, oh whoa, where Ooh, is this? Wow. wow. It's okay. the left side. 
Interesting. So yeah, you overshot overshot it a little bit, but like you're always happy to get to launch it all. Yeah, That's I'm interesting. Surprised. I've never have, seen. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I've gotten one time during a practice run. I I launched so far that I went way over over this uh this over the level of geometry, and I just kept falling, and uh, there was nothing but black the entire time. Man. So then, uh, yeah, the rest of this uh, this level, um, if I recall correctly, is mostly glitchless. Um, yeah, I think this is pretty much glitchless. You get to see um, kind of what I was talking about, where it looks, you know, looks like there's obviously blood splatter on the floor, you know, it's all kind of darkened. You're kind of, yeah, you have to kind of work with silhouettes, um, yeah. Here is an interesting section. Um, you're supposed to keep going down that hallway we saw there and grab a light, because what, what we have here is a maze that's completely dark, made of cardboard boxes. What you're supposed to do casually is grab the light and brighten up the whole place. But you can actually memorize the route, and as you saw there, um, do it completely in the dark, just by memorizing a couple yeah. of inputs. Uh, the way that I um, actually do that is if you turn on your quality settings all the way down to, to low or to custom, um, there is a um, there's this tiny little bit of light that you can only see on those quality settings. There's a, a like a little horizontal line of light that you see, and you can use that um, to po position yourself and as a, and use it as a reference point for your movement. Yeah, there are, there are that, a couple different the... yeah, there are a couple yeah. different methods. Um, yeah, but it's definitely one of the more intimidating tricks when you're first starting out with the run because it it looks like um, like it would be a run killer. Yeah. Uh, but with that, that's uh, that's blackout. Yeah. This uh, next level is called clone, and as the name implies, we're going to be cloning objects. However, um, we are going to be doing the majority of this level glitchless, except for the Easter egg that's at the very end. Um, the yeah. reason for that is there is a, a warpless route that saves around fifteen seconds. However, it is incredibly inconsistent. Pretty much the hardest tricks in the run. Uh, the world record for the warpless category, um, which uses the exact same tricks that we're using uh, for the most part, um, doesn't even do the warpless route for um, for this for this specific level, just of how hard the tricks are. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely um, it's both inconsistent and difficult to do the out of bounds launch um, route. What you essentially do is, I oh, just wanted to mention, yeah, that was the uh, cloning mechanic you saw there. But yeah, for the slightly faster route, um, it basically involves like a bunch of clipping objects through barriers and several launches, all of which are inconsistent and difficult to pull off. So for 15 seconds, it's not usually worth it. So yeah, as you can see, um, you know, just kind of doing that basically as fast as we can just to get over the obstacles the game puts in our way. You know, yeah, and then we do yeah, puzzles like, like this, this the, the Red Apple Room, which is a very infamous puzzle among uh, casual players. I've seen people spend anywhere between five minutes or two hours in this room alone. It's very it's very funny to see people um, yeah. try and solve this for the first time. Yeah, is you might it was it was only shown pretty quick there before you turned around. But yeah, what, what you're supposed to do is basically the cloning is also based on perspective. So if you line it up so that when you click the apple, it's partially overlapping the button, it will just appear right on top of the button. But you don't really, uh, that's not how you would assume it would work necessarily when you're first starting out playing the game. You want to explain the, the only glitch in this level that we're about to do? Yep. So here, um, obviously the name of the, uh, the level is Clone, so you'll notice um, that the soda machine here produces additional soda machines. Um, and what we're going to do with this is uh, another uh, warp launch, like we uh, used in all to get the egg. Nice. Um, perfect. And I'll use this moment, since we have a little bit of time here, to explain warp launches a little bit more. Um, so essentially, um, it's basically just, yeah, the object placement system doesn't know where to put the object. So it places it the size of the entire level, um, which launches you. But like in almost the same moment, like the same frame or something, the game mm -hmm. deletes the object because it knows something, something's gone wrong. But you still get that momentum push upwards. Mm -hmm. And uh, you want to also explain Dollhouse? Oh yeah, yeah. So yeah, going into Dollhouse here, we we'll start, we just have a little bit of walking. Um, yeah, just a little walking, an interesting kind of scene here. So this one, um, this level, basically the way you're meant to play it is it's a bunch of, you know, portals uh, around the level. And so you're supposed to navigate through the, the level, um, kind of, it's supposed to be like a really interesting, like, 
kind of house houses with portals that like lead to other portals. Yeah. Well, you can actually grab these portals from, from anywhere as long as you have like a, a line of sight to them and they're not blocked by level geometry. So what you can do is just launch out of bounds right here and grab the portal that leads directly to the end of the level. There we go. We're gonna line it up right here and see if we can get it. Oh, there we go. It's really small. All right. Yep. Wonderful. There we go. Perfect. And then we just uh, resize a little bit. Um, and the room is actually almost the perfect size to hold this house, which is very fortunate. There we go. Wonderful. Perfect. This is actually a really good run. I'm not gonna lie. Oh, yeah. God. Yeah. Uh, yeah. This yeah, has been good. Really good. I don't think it's yeah. PV pace only because of the the trouble that we had in optical, but it's still really good. Yeah. So next um, level coming coming up is a uh, labyrinth, and this one is is a little bit crazy in uh, in all Easter eggs. This level has three Easter eggs to get, um, yeah. and it's it uh, also has one of the most difficult tricks in the run. So first off this... here, we're gonna do uh, this is this is also using glitchless. You'll notice we're doing some kind of park some unnecessary seeming parkour here. I don't know if that worked. I don't know if that. Ah, uh, was close. But basically, it's we're meant we're trying to skip audio triggers. Basically, triggers. Oh no, that it did work. Do, nice. That do uh, voice lines, because what we're trying to do is we're trying to, because that last line. Right here, um, coming up to the end. Uh, also, I this just last line off. has a teleport at I the end. I just want to show it. off. In the warpless so category, basically, we just go here and finish the level. But we, actually, yeah, but we actually have wait, to. Like, wait, wait. Okay, yeah. I was gonna say you scared me there for a second because if you hit that trigger in the elevator, yeah. it will just end the level. Ah, don't scare me like that, man. Don't worry. Uh, but yeah, the Warblitz category just finishes the level right there. I don't know why the elevator works, but it does. Um, but what yeah. we're going to do right here is um, we're going to just line ourselves up with specific visual cues um, in order to immediately press the alarm clock when we get teleported back. Your horizontal distance is the only thing that changes. Your vertical, no, your horizontal position is the only thing that changes, but not your vertical distance. So um, like right here, we don't even have to move the mouse um, yeah. in order to hit the alarm clock. Yeah, for that, um, it basically, like, it just, uh, if you can get get a, get an angle set up correctly each time, um, you can make it so you're right, your cursor's right above the alarm clock, um, always. So here we're, yeah, just resize a portal to, to continue through the level. Do you want to explain the trick that you came up with? Yeah, yeah, so this one, I'm, I'm a little proud of this one. Um, it's a little bit inconsistent, but essentially coming up here, we're going to have a door object that we can grab. What we're going to do with that is we're going to take it through a couple of barriers. Yeah, we're going to take it through a couple of barriers. This first barrier is really easy. The developers modeled the geometry incorrectly, so there's the big empty band where there should be a barrier to prevent you from taking objects. The second one is a little bit difficult, though. Um, you have to push it through the object, through the uh, barrier, rather. Um, um, and it, it can take happen. a couple of tries because the game, um, sometimes the game just launches you instead. Yep. Is that instead? Yeah. Come on. Oh my god, it worked. Nice. Nice. Third try. Yeah, that was good. So here, this is going to look a little crazy. It's it's kind of like this game's version of prop flying. This is actually completely glitchless, though. This is like just something oh. that works. You jump and resize, no. and it zeroes your velocity. Ah. Careful. Ah. Close. Okay, so we almost we're trying to get into that hallway there. So essentially, so you know, basically that was a checkpoint reset. Um, but the problem is that the checkpoint reset puts you too far ahead to go and re-grab the door. So instead, we're going to use a line up here to click an object in the hallway. And uh, uh, it can take a couple of tries because, yeah, this, this setup is a little inconsistent. Yeah. But there's an object... Reset check... Sometimes when you reset checkpoint, it, like, positions you very weirdly. You know, yeah. yeah, but... But continue? Yeah. yeah, yeah, sorry. So there's an object in the hallway, and when you click it, it essentially clones itself several times outwards. So what we're trying then we can go up and grab the Easter egg. Dang, okay. This was originally nice. found by um, Bagel Cat. Um, this was the original route that we had for Labyrinth for this specific uh, Easter egg. However, um, then Archmage managed to find the other strat that we use. Yeah. And it was a bit more, it's a bit more consistent because I right here, I'm just resetting we can get this uh, Easter egg. Yeah, the door strat, uh, as you saw, See can here? fail. Um, 
in my experience, it's about a 50-50 shot, which is unfortunate, but, um, nice. Yeah, there perfect. we go. Let's stay there for So yeah, we'll just climb the staircase of cubes here. Grab the egg that's back there. You saw briefly he, uh, yeah, he grabbed it and released it. And now we'll use this to break the floor, fall down. And this isn't actually the end of the level. It's meant to make you think it's the end of the level when you're playing the game for the first time. But we're actually just going to lead into uh, a hallway. And this hallway is another spot where people have a real hard time in their first playthrough. Um, yeah, basically, this, uh... whichever, yeah, whichever yeah, direction you, you look first is walled off. So you want to look in the opposite direction from where the arrow is pointing each time. And then what we're going to do right here, the, the hallway that was behind us, we're going to reset checkpoint so that the hallway is And then we're going to use this cube right here to uh, jump on it and grab the Easter egg all the way from the distance. Yeah, yeah. so when you reset a checkpoint there, um, yeah, that, uh, that, that hallway behind you changed you to a different hallway, and uh, that has the Easter egg in it. And then for this specific, uh, for this specific room right here, we have an Easter egg that you grab as you go through this hallway right here, this long hallway right yeah. here, and that's the last Easter egg of this level. Um, last Easter egg, labyrinth. Okay, sometimes this cube resize is weird, but we're gonna grab an, uh, another cube past this room right here to teleport us to a different area. And then when we land on the floor down here, we're gonna transport to this final room. And right here is uh, called Elevator Maze. Originally, you're supposed to um, follow a series of arrows on the floor after getting lost in the maze. But what you saw there is that we already have a predetermined path, which is right, right, left, right, left, right, right. If that's how we follow it. Uh, you want to explain this room right here? Yeah, so this room is really interesting. Essentially, what you're seeing here is the skybox. Um, but then when you get close to certain triggers, um, it actually creates walls um, that look like the skybox, right? So it creates kind of a um, phantogram effect, sort of, I think that's the term. And then uh, when all the walls appear, that room appears, and then you can just click the alarm clock, which ends the level. Uh, this is the final real level of the game. Um, what we're going to be doing here is we're going to be taking this clinic right here and then just resizing it um, so that it's pretty small. And what we're going to see here is that we're going to put it out of bounds and bring it and when we're out of bounds, we're going to be teleported over this, over to the final area of the game. And we should be small enough so that we can hit this checkpoint right here, and then reset checkpoint and be brought back to size one. Um, and they, uh, sorry, Archmage, would you like to uh, explain this last uh, Easter egg? How it's kind of been like a meme in the community. Yeah. So this last Easter egg, it's just got a little smiley face on it, um, and uh, it's kind of been memed about a little bit in the community. Um, just because it's, you know, it's just, it looks kind of like, you know, just a forced smile. Um, there's also an achievement for the game that you get by standing in one place without moving for five minutes, and the icon for that achievement is that Easter egg, so, you know, just a uh, kind okay. of a meme. Yeah. And then, fittingly, we're going to do another Out of Bounds launch with a chess piece like we did at the beginning of the and that's going to bring us a bit out of bounds of this room, and if we just move forward, we're going to fall over to the final, um, to the end trigger of this level, where you're supposed to have an alarm clock uh, turned to 8 a.m., like a giant alarm clock, and we can just, as you can see, it's right here, and so we can just barely uh, trigger the end, uh, the end zone for this level, and also trigger the loading zone to bring us to the next level. Uh, but after this loading zone, there's, there's going to be a, a fade to black, and after that fade to black, there's going to be a loading screen. At the other side of that loading screen, there's, I'm going to hit an alarm clock. And when I hit that alarm clock, it's going to be time. So three, two, one, and time. Nice. All right. That should, that, that's super liminal, all Easter eggs. I did say that if I miss an Easter egg, that I would donate $20 because there's only eight of them and I shouldn't be missing an Easter egg, but I don't think I missed any. Yeah, let me think. Right. You got both an optical, you got the one in cubism, you got the one in clone. And you got all three in labyrinth and one in white space. Yep, that's all of them. Mm -hmm. uh, out of curiosity, was my uh, final time post or restream? Twenty-two Your final time was twenty-two twenty-four. Yeah, not bad. Twenty-two twenty-four RTA, probably more like twenty-one something. 
IG team, which is how we find them um, on the leaderboards. But thank yeah, you so much to speed. Yeah, thank you so much to speed stuff to charity for having us here. Um, again, this is the first time that this cat for having it be conceptualized so recently. We're very happy to have this um, run being shown off for the first time at a marathon. Um, it's gone a long way, longer than uh, we've ever anticipated it would, even if it's uh, not as popular competitive as a category as the main leaderboards are. But um, we're very happy to have it debuted here. Shout out to everyone in the Supernova community, Bagel Cat, for um, coming up with the idea for this category. And um, thank you to Park Mage for being here and um, helping commentate with me. Is there anyone uh, or anything that you'd like to plug or shout out, Park? Uh, no, not really. I just want to say, yeah, thanks so much for having us. Um, this was awesome. And yeah, thanks again to the uh, yeah to the Super Liminal community. There's some awesome people over there. Very nice. If you're interested in um, speedrunning with us, you can um, just look us up on speedrun.com. Uh, uh, and there's a main uh, leaderboard and a, a category extensive leaderboard where this run is. Um, so if you're on console or on PC, it doesn't matter. Just grab your controller, grab your mouse and keyboard and come speedrun with us. We're more than happy to have you. Um, so yeah, that is it for me. Uh, the next run is going to be also me doing Light Matter. Uh, any percent in the major glitches obtained proof of that. And as much as Pizza for Charity for helping us show off uh, Super Limo. And yeah, that's all. I'll see you guys soon.